Welcome back to the greenhouse and if you're new here, welcome aboard. Now if you follow the channel you would know that we were out here last night. We ran out of daylight and we ran out of energy and we ran out of batteries on the camera even. So we were trying to get our flow rate. We showed 100 and almost 130. It was like 128 that it spiked. We leveled off at 94, 95 degrees between 90 and 95 on five and a half gallons per minute. We swapped pumps again and then we took temperatures and that's where we saw those massive increases in temperature. So we increased pressure on the system, we slowed the flow rate and we've got better results. Now we're going to fine tune this. I have this little ball valve. I showed everything yesterday in the last video. Now this was day four video. We're on day five now and I wanted to update this entire process. We're going to use this little mason jar and we're gonna do 15 minute intervals and we're gonna see what kind of flow rate we're getting. Now if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate you guys. This channel is what it is because of all of you guys. So you guys are the VIPs here. I just wanna show all of the cool little things that we're doing. All right. So I'm gonna primarily be out of camera, but you'll be able to see my hands. I like to talk with my hands, so here we go. Now, I wanna kick this on first off and take temperatures from this system. It's So the general idea here was to measure this for 15 seconds, which I timed out. So measuring this for 15 seconds, we're gonna have to multiply that by four to get to the minute rate. And then that is going to get us 12 cups per minute, a little over 12. So we are under one gallon of flow per minute. And this water is physically warm. It's like bath water. To alleviate our issues of this leaking pre ball valve I just went ahead and taped around here around the barb there when in doubt tape it out DIY free gasket oh that feels like a whole lot better fit there just checking out flow rate here we can really minimize it and with just one flick of the ball valve we can greatly increase flow so this is basically a DIY regulator flow regulator so this has been super cool to be able to achieve free heating of water with a massive pile of compost now getting this system set up was a little tricky yes we swapped multiple pumps in we didn't want to spend a hundred dollars plus on a flow regulator that is going to do the same exact thing but it would be cool to have a regulator on the system because then it has an exact measurement of flow rate not just me measuring it out with mason jars but but the math is there it's adding up we are at about one gallon or a little bit less than one gallon per minute so that's the most important part about this water moving system here it has to have the correct amount of flow because you're gonna draw too much energy too quickly, flow too much water past it, and it doesn't have a chance to transfer into the water before it comes back through the system and dumps in the tank. So we were pushing maybe 110 to 115 degrees steady out of this pile. We're pushing all of this water through 200 feet of PEX. Now, 100 foot in the pile, 100 foot in the greenhouse. So we only have that much to transfer. Now these lines are not the best to transfer heat through. It's insulated, it's plastic, it's an insulator. So it doesn't want to transfer as freely or easily as a piece of metal piping would. So moving forward into the future, I want to get some metal, but I want to refrain from using copper like we have in years past because that seems to do the same thing as the PEX. We're getting the same temperatures and the antimicrobial, antibacterial properties of the copper tubing itself just negates the process of the compost breaking down within five, six inches of that copper. It's been an interesting journey here trying to get to the best success we can. Now, I chose this PEX because it was relatively cheap for 100 foot of it. 
and it's pretty pliable. I can wrap it around stuff and it's not one time bend, you know, like a metal pipe would. So if we wrap metal around our barrel outside, it's going to be there for the long haul and we're going to have to drain the barrel, move everything as one. Obviously the airlines can be moved separately, but I also have our rubber hose out there. So that is project number two. Now that we've got all this set up, I can basically tap into that rubber hose, which is lower on the 55 gallon drum. The PEX is on the top half and the rubber is on the bottom half consistently wrapped around. The rubber seemed to conduct the heat better for compost heating as we did it in our little greenhouse years and years ago. So we no longer are doing the minimalistic pile, the minimalistic setup to passively get some heat. We are on a large scale. We've got like 11 tons of compost. Being able to draw and pull 110 to 120 degrees into our overflow tank is going to be super valuable this winter. I would like to heat up more water. So looking forward in the future, I would like to expand this thermal tank, this overflow heat storage tank. The more thermal mass we could store during the day and some at night, we could really benefit from having all of that heat energy from the compost stored in the water. That is what Jean Payne did himself, was heated up large tanks of water in his basement to keep his house warm. So that is what got me onto this. It is a very interesting subject to me. Now we can run outside and go check out the actual pile itself that we're drawing all this heat from. Whew. See that steam rising off? It's pretty chilly out here. Pile is just holding right between 140 and 150, and that's been there for the last two, three days. So as long as we keep this thing nice and moist, the shady side is super wet. The sunny side looks dry on the surface, but just an inch under the surface, it is completely soaked. So I really just had to finish the video from yesterday. We've got our flow rate perfected. It is flowing exactly what we want it to. Uh, flow rate and temperature. So we are achieving what we set out to achieve. Now the air heating system is operating also. Putting 115 degrees plus out of the air heating system. Now I've got to get myself another thermometer because I put my little GoV thermometer just propped up on the end of my air tube and it slid down. So I have an operating, functioning thermometer halfway down my airline. My arms couldn't reach it. I've tried a few different things. So if anybody has any suggestions to try and get my thermometer out of there, I did go buy a cheap little thermometer. I gotta throw some batteries in it so we have some observations, temps in the greenhouse. I can't go without a thermometer. I gotta see what is data logged for overnight and highs and lows. So I like to share all of that, all that steam coming off there. You can smell the compost. It smells super sweet. It smells good. It does not smell bad or rotten by any means. Having the ratios correct, it smells. It's just wafting in my face. It's hard to describe the smell. If you know what I'm talking about, you know exactly what smell I'm talking about. So I wanted to come out on this nice sunny day, finish up the video from last night, just share a bunch of little details and kind of wrap up the systems that we've put in place and the whole process of building this Jean Payne compost heater. Now we are going to do some insulating of this pile with tarps and stuff. Going forward here just to insulate and provide better heat control and moisture retention. But with all the rain we had, we had cloudy and rainy days for the last six days. So this is the only sunny day we've had in at least a week here. Ooh. So now that we're done venting all the heat that we built all day long, all of our thermal masses are storing energy. I've got like 115, 110 degrees blowing on me here. I got a little chilly with the door open. So I'm fascinated by this process. I am fascinated by this process. It is super cool to see what we can achieve when we set our minds to it using the natural decomposition process to heat a greenhouse. Just absolutely awesome in my book. Now if anybody's got any questions on this one today, I just wanted to finish up the video from yesterday like I said. So now that this system's complete, the numbers are where I want it. 
we're going to try and plug into our other water moving system along with moving water to our stove, thermal mass, setting up a windmill. There is a ton of stuff coming down the line. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. I'm going to get my batteries in my thermometer so we can collect some data out here overnight temps and stuff. Got to get our tunnels and lights put up, so stay tuned. I want to issue a huge thank you to you guys for watching this and brainstorming with me, asking questions and comments, concerns, ideas. Just very cool to be able to do this on a platform like this. So thank you guys again, and I will see you guys in the next video.